that era and the success, so much of it is remembered from those iconic games against Manchester United and the unbeaten record and the tunnel and you're a part of so many of those games and watching them back over, over the last few weeks, like, Jesus, it's bloody exhilarating to even watch them now. The, the hair is on the back of your necks. What was it like for you to be in the middle of them? Did, were those games different? Were you different around those games or did you manage to just stay in your level all the time? What, just on, like, against teams like Man United? Or against just that against Manchester season, United and that particular rivalry with United? Um, do you know what? I think it was healthy for football, I think. You know, to have, you know, two going, you know, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Um, it's nice to have that. But it was two going toe-to-toe -to -toe very early on. And uh, but, but I felt, you know, you, 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 couldn't, you couldn't slip up. You know, you start, if you lost, say, two, three games, I mean... Honestly, I think at one stage, if you lost five games, that was it. You just four or five games, you couldn't win. You couldn't win because the other team was just like, "Thank you very much. That's that's what we need." And they just kind of go ahead, and they they wouldn't let it slip. So you had to go toe to toe, and you know, one point, three points here and there. You know, you you couldn't stretch it to five, seven, ten, fifteen. You know, no chance. You had to kind of you know stay in the game, mm. um, and that's you know that 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 brings pressure. You know, internal pressure individual pressure, team pressure. But if you've got enough guys who, who love that pressure and sometimes even need that pressure, uh, it's even better because you know you're always going to be wired. You're always going to be up for it. You're not going to miss a trick. You're going to be on it. You're going to look after yourself because you know the opposition, they're looking after themselves as well. Yes, they might be having a good time every now and again, but you know most of the time they're on it and they're waiting for someone to slip up. And you don't want, you don't want to be the one slipping up and you slip up for two, three games, and then they just pull away. And then they find that little gap, and they never, 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 never allow you to close that gap again. So uh, it can happen sometimes, you know. Those, but, get, um, those games, the, they get the really is tasty. Very important. Mm. You know, the last 10, 12 games can be very important. But um, if you let it slip, you know, they, they might be saying, what, last six games? They won it the last six games. So you always have to look at that mentality. Stay in, stay in the game. Everybody up for it. No one letting it slip. And uh, it, I, it was healthy for football. I think it was healthy for football, for sure, at the time. They did get very tasty, those matches. I, d I don't think you played in the nil-nil where Van Nistelrooy misses the penalty and Martin Keown is shouting in his face, but the match where you lose the 49-game uh, record and, well, since we're in the company, I would say Wayne really dived and uh, the <laughs> pizza gate straight I, after I just that. Wish, I just wish VAR was around. <laughs> <laughs> because referees are more cuter, they understand, they see the more, they know what's going on. That would have been, you know, it, but, but it was a time when you probably you probably could get away with it, and it, it, it happened. But now that would be picked up straight away. United players felt that maybe you were bad losers with that. That even, you know you couldn't accept that because of the rivalry, you couldn't admit that United were a better team. That that even though it did end and it had to end, that for some reason the Arsenal players just wouldn't accept it. W would you look back and say, actually, yeah, we were well, bad yeah, losers? Because, because of, you know, how they got the first penalty, things like that. It, it, it's yeah. normal. I think it would be picked up now. It would be picked up now. There is no penalty. But back then, it, was, it is what it is. Referees weren't sharp enough. And, uh, you know, they were thinking everyone's so honest and things like that. And, you know, if we had, if we had the uh, VAR, that would have been picked up all day long. The thing with it's that, Nathan... Yeah, but the thing with that, Nathan, is, is that... Um, you, I, I would be, if I was in, an, in that dressing room, I would be absolutely gutted about that because you don't mind losing it, but you don't want it to be in that way. Because that, 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 you just don't want it to be in that way. And of course, I'm, I'm with Sol. You don't want to lose it to Man United because they're not going to let you forget. But that wasn't like Arsenal being bad losers because they were beaten fair and square. You know, so it's an easy one to take that one. Obviously, the memorable moment is Roy Keane and Patrick Vieira going head to head. Ian, when you were. Given centre backs jip, did you ever give Roy Keane some jip when you were players? Me and Roy Keane always argued when we was on the pitch. We always were spitting at each other in respect of words and saying stuff and and things like that. You know what I mean? And the, the thing is, is that um, when you when you're doing it as well, even at the time you knew because I remember when Roy Keane signed for United from Forest. We had me and Roy Keane had some run-ins when he was at Forest, but when he when he signed for United, I remember we played them. Um, in South Africa, we played Man United. I think we beat them, scored a couple of penalties. We beat Man United. And I remember in the tunnel, I remember saying, all the best to your United career. I said, yeah, cheers. And we was always like that. But like when we was on the pitch, you know, if, if I didn't have Tony Adams 
as a captain and a leader, I'd probably want someone like Roy Keane as a captain and leader, especially now I know him. We talk about football all the time, talk about the days. You know what I mean? He's the kind of character that's it's about winning, man. It's, it's all winning. And whatever it takes in respect of you as a professional to get yourself in a situation and a position to make sure that you win is the only thing that he's going to accept. He's not going to accept anything less than that. He's my friend. Now, you know what's really good about it is that the way we went at each other then, when you see now, to, to, to be able to call him my friend now, you know what I mean? I know, you know what I mean? We talk about all sorts of stuff you know, now. It's, I, I, that makes me feel good. And that's, that's just great about the game. Saul, for you and, and that United team, was there a, was there a respect, even a, a grudging respect of maybe you were two alike? Maybe that why there was such a rivalry, that there was such a desperation to win, that it was Vieira on one side, it was Keane on the other side, that you saw something of yourselves in them? No, I, I you know, I, I know quite a few of the uh, Man United guys from early on, England, um, you know, under 16, under 17, under 18. So I had, a lot, I had quite a lot of friends actually in Man United uh, playing in the team, and so, so for me, there is that professional rival, that rivals. You know, I think that's it's healthy. You know, you keep everyone, as I said before, it keeps you on your toes. You want to kind of, you know, you want to get one over them and things like that. But you, you have to appreciate the skill they had, and they were probably doing the same uh, as uh, uh, same to us. You know, whilst we were playing at uh, Arsenal, so it was like, you know, it, it's not like a standoff, but you know, you have to appreciate. And, uh, and recognize the quality they had, and I'm sure deep down they will say they'll be saying, yeah, they recognize the quality we had. It was just slightly done in a different way, you know. But we still kind of ended up with the same kind of okay. <laughs> they obviously won a lot more uh, <laughs> Premier Leagues, uh, you know. But we at the time it was it was fantastic toe to toe, and we professionally were at each other. But at the same time, professionally, kind of, you know, appreciating uh, appreciating the other side and their qualities of, of of football ability. Ian, you seem to really enjoy the uh, dynamic when yourself and Roy will be on television together, whether it's at World Cups or covering European Championships, and uh, you, you seem to play off each other quite well. Well, the thing is, it's not even a case of you playing off each other. Roy says what he says, <laughs> <laughs> and then you either disagree with it or you agree with it. But if you disagree, and that, then you know that you're you're going into an area where you don't know what's coming next. And what I love about it is that I'm I'm never far away from, from bursting out and laughing because, and he's not neither. You know, of course he's a serious guy and he always says to me before we go on, right, he, don't give me none of that banter violence, man. I'm here to talk serious football. And so, you know what I mean? I also, I'm already getting ready to, to laugh and smile with him. But like, he never says anything on there for effect. He never says anything when he's talking about football for effect. When he says something, I remember a little bit, a little while back, um, he said something about David De Gea mm. and Harry Maguire. He meant that. So I think the people get confused with, oh, him saying something like that, and, oh, he said... He meant that. So you, when, when you know Roy Keane, you take that for what it is, because he probably would be swinging. <laughs> he probably is swinging. But for me and Roy now, honestly, it's just like... When they say, yeah, right, yeah, right, it's you and Roy Keane, instantly excited, because... We, we, we have a great day, and then we go on the box, and he'll be talking normally, but he literally goes, and he literally turns it to another person. As soon as the music for the intro is finished, he's, and it's not like he's switching something, it's just that's what he is. I'm, not, I'm here to speak about football, and I'm serious. I'm here to talk serious stuff, and I will tell you exactly what I, I'm telling you, and I mean exactly what I'm telling you. I've never, I don't have as much fun on the television. Like, obviously, Sheer and Lydica, magnificent. But when I'm on with Roy, I can feel my butterflies. But there's butterflies in my stomach because you don't know what's coming. He's made no secret, Ian, that he'd love to get back into management. Like, when you talk about that David De Gea moment and Harry Maguire moment, and, like, it sets the internet alight and it gets people talking for days and whether it's an acceptable way to speak about modern-day footballers, do you think, ultimately, it's harming his chances of getting back into the game? Um, you have to say um, that there'll be people who'll be worried about that kind of comment. But if you take the comment for what it was, he said if he was there, if he was one of their teammates, if he was with them, he'd be swinging. He's not one of their teammates. He's not saying that if I was a manager and I went in there, I'd be swinging. So for people to be saying, oh, I'm going to stay away from Roy Keane because what, he's going he's gonna to hit players, it's rubbish. He was talking about them as his teammates when he was playing. I remember talking about 
Roy Keane and the way Roy Keane captained the great Man United sides. That's what he'd probably have to go in there and do to get those guys to focus on what they're doing. So for people to look at Roy Keane and say they're not going to take him because of what he might say as a pundit is ludicrous. It's ridiculous. You know, he's got a lot to offer. You only need to sit, you know, you need to sit down and speak to him. He'll tell you about a left back in the in the second division and how good he is, what his strengths are, what his weaknesses are. You know, it's just that we're in a time now where people are just like, you know, they'd rather regurgitate the same managers and say, let me go and get him and see, you know, he's looking for a chance back in. Let me put him back in. Let me put him back in. If I was the owner of a club, I'd have Roy Keane in it. Absolutely, I'd have Roy Keane in it all day long. Because I know that the players are going to respond to him. And you, you, you give him the right pieces with all the, um, the, the data that you can get now. And, of course, it would still probably anger him. Somebody coming from outside, like the, from the, the, the fitness team, telling him who he can pick and who he can't pick. But those are the things that I know that he'll get, he'll get used to. How are you not going to have a player like that, a, a, a manager like that, who's, who's had the career he's had, He's had a career he's had and not try and tap into that to help your team. They're missing a trick. All of them who's not taking them, missing a trick.